So as the President has said, indeed as he exemplifies, we've come a long way, but you know, and I know, that we have so much further to go. We were cruelly reminded of that with the recent deaths of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, two more black men killed in police incidents, this time in Louisiana and Minnesota. And then in Dallas, five police officers killed while serving and protecting peaceful protesters targeted because they were police. And then, of course, yesterday, three police officers murdered in an apparent premeditated ambush in Baton Rouge. This madness has to stop. Watching the news from Baton Rouge yesterday, my heart broke, not just for those officers and their grieving families, but for all of us. We have difficult, painful, essential work ahead of us to repair the bonds between our police and our communities and between and among each other. We need one another to do this work, and we need leaders like the NAACP. We need police officers to help us make progress. These murders threaten all of that. Killing police officers is a terrible crime. That's why our laws treat the murders of police so seriously, because they represent the rule of law itself. If you take aim at that and at them, you take aim at all of us. Anyone who kills a police officer and anyone who helps must be held accountable. And as President, I will bring the full weight of the law to bear and making sure those who kill police officers are brought to justice. There can be no justification, no looking the other way. We all have to make sure and pray it ends. The officers killed yesterday in Baton Rouge were named Montrell Jackson, Matthew Gerald, Brad Garofala, when they died, they were responding to a call about a man with a gun. How many families, how many more families would be paying the price if we did not have brave men and women answering those calls? That's why I'm haunted by the image of what the officers in Dallas were doing when they died protecting a peaceful march, talking with the protesters. Where would our democracy be without courageous people willing to do that? So we all need to be partners in making law enforcement as secure and effective as it needs to be. That means investing in our police, in training on the proper use of force, especially lethal force how to avoid using force to resolve incidents. <laughs> Officer safety and wellness, everything they need to do their jobs right and rebuild trust with their communities. I've said from the beginning of my campaign that will be my priority as president and perhaps the best way to honor our police is to follow the lead of police departments across the country who are striving to do better. The deaths of Alton and Philando drove home how urgently we need to make reforms to policing and criminal justice.
how we cannot rest until we root out implicit bias and stop the killings of African Americans. Because there is, as you know so well, another hard truth at the heart of this complex matter. Many African Americans fear the police. I can hear you, some of you in this room. And today, there are people all across America sick over what happened in Baton Rouge and in Dallas, but also fearful that the murders of police officers means that vital questions about police-community relations will go unanswered. Now, that is a reasonable fear, isn't it? And all of this tells us very powerfully that we have to change. Many police officers across the country agree with that. But it can only happen if we build trust and accountability. And let's admit it, that gets harder every time someone else is killed. 